So let me start by saying congrats on this. I thought you did such a great job with this movie. Oh, um, I have tons of questions, but I like, since I have a little extra time, I like throwing some curveballs at the beginning that, you know, just some other things. Um, huh. And I'm curious, and this question might not apply to you because I would imagine a lot of people want to get in business with you and make movies with you. But if you could get the financing for any project right now, uh, what would you make and why? Um, well, you know what? The project that uh, springs to mind is a project that I hope I do have the finance for. Um, there's a project, uh, there's a book that I've wanted to get the rights to for like literally 30 years um, or 31 years. Um, and uh, and finally, after all that time, I've, I think I've managed to get the rights to it. Uh, and I hope to be shooting it next year, but I can't tell you what it is. So um, I'm going to frustrate that question somewhat. Is it called In the Garden of Beasts? No, it's not. No, no. So, so this is something completely different? Completely different. Very different. Uh, I won't pressure you on it. I hope it comes together. Thank you very much indeed. Um, if so, You've made some very cool movies. If someone had never seen, if someone has never seen anything you've directed, what do you want them to start with? Well, I think, I mean, I think my favorite of my movies is, um, uh, is Atonement. Um, but do you start with that and then work down? Or do you kind of start with the one that I was less happy with and work up to Atonement? I don't know. I don't know. I asked James McAvoy the same question recently, and he yeah. said to start with Atonement. Did he? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen James for years. I'd love to see him. Yeah, he, he speaks very highly of that movie. He loves that film. Yeah, me too. It was a special moment. Yeah, it's a fantastic movie. Um, would you do another episode of Black Mirror? Yeah, if, if uh, yes, I would. I, I, I love Charlie's writing. Um, uh, I think he's an extraordinary writer. Um, I'd prefer to do a kind of um, feature written by Charlie um, uh, and I often say to him come on write a movie um, but he always kind of demurs for some reason I don't know I, uh, I'm not quite sure why but um, but yeah I certainly would always um, uh, pretty much jump at the chance of working with Charlie I think he's a brilliant brilliant writer I'm fascinated by the editing process of all movies because that's the final rewrite it's where it all comes together which film did you end up in the editing room with and were like scared, if you will, like, man, this is going to be a tough edit. And which one was like the breeze? Um, well, I, none of them are a breeze. Um, uh, because as you say, it's it, you're, 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 you're making your final decisions, you know, um, uh, throughout the process, you can always say to yourself, well, you know, I don't have to make a decision on that now. I can either include it or or exclude it in the edit. Whereas when you get to the edit process, you're um, you're faced with that final choice. So I don't think any of them are, um, are a breeze. Although having said that, the, the process of uh, cutting Cyrano was a, was, was a very, very pleasant one. Uh, I, uh, because of COVID and lockdown, um, uh, we edited it in my house uh, in the country, uh, in England, and, and I have a barn there, and we turned the barn into a, a cutting room, uh, and it was a, a, a very happy six months. But editing is always weird, you know, you have to build your ego up for the shoot. Uh, you have to kind of build yourself up to be able to tell, you know, 150, 350 people, um, uh, what to do, uh, which doesn't come entirely naturally. Uh, and then in the, in, in the edit, you're kind of confronted uh, uh, by that and, and you have to kind of deconstruct your ego again and, and, and face all the things, all your, all, 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 all the things you got wrong um, and all your failures. And uh, and you're never sat in an edit going, oh, that's a great scene. Um, you're really, you know, spending six months focusing on what doesn't work rather than what does work. Speaking of Cyrano, um, what was it, jumping on in, what was it about this 
material that said, I w- this, this is going to be my next movie. I want to do this. Um, I think I, I think it's possibly my most personal film uh, since Atonement. Um, uh, I felt very, very close to all of the characters, but in particular Cyrano. I think he he somehow got right under my skin. I guess when I was a teenager, I kind of I felt odd and unlovable, and um, and I still, as a lot of us do, have trouble uh, feeling worthy of of love, you know, um, and worthy of being treated well. And so, um, and so, I think that relation, my relationship with that character, was a kind of deep and personal one. And um, and when I saw um uh peter dinklage in the workshop production i saw uh, 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 um uh, up in connecticut um a, a few years ago now i kind of thought okay this is this is something i'm interested in exploring and i want to learn about uh i think that one of the things that i really loved is the way you staged so many of the things in the film a lot, uh, i'm just thinking about some of the musical numbers can you sort of talk about how you actually went about in pre-production and figuring out how you wanted all this to go? Yeah, it was weird. I had a very clear vision of what I imagined the film to look and sound like. Um, uh, right from the beginning, I knew that it would be a kind of uh, fantasy of a period and a place. I had a sense of the colors, I had a sense of the costumes, and I had a sense of the kind of uh camera rhythm uh, and 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 movement i knew that um you know some of my films recently really since anna karenina have been quite theatrical or presentational in their style by which i mean using kind of quite wide angle lenses and very kind of specific compositions and and with this i think possibly because of the nature of musicals I felt like I needed uh, an, a, a cinematic aesthetic that was more observational. Um, uh, so we used much longer lenses with this movie, and we we tried to create an atmosphere of spontaneity and and kind of chaos, really, uh, which was all very carefully orchestrated, but something that had a much um, yeah much more spontaneous atmosphere. What, what ended up being, there's always, um, I would imagine, every director I've spoken to always talks about how every movie has unique challenges you have to overcome. Uh, on this film, obviously you had the COVID of it all, but besides COVID, what, what were some of the, the really big challenges you had to, you know, get over? Um, I think there are two sequences really that are the most challenging. The theater sequence was incredibly challenging. It's a very long scene. Um, with you know a lot of background artists, um, and it introduces a lot of characters. It moves between um, intimate moments to spectacle, uh, back to intimacy and to music and uh, singing and and sword fighting and um, and so to corral all of those different elements and give them a cohesion uh was was certainly very challenging making sure that the background artists felt um a sense of um ownership of it as well to keep them kind of engaged and part of it they were you know the audience was a was a was a was a very important character within the drama um so that was creatively very challenging um uh the other thing that was really challenging was shooting up Mount Etna. Um, uh, we had planned, uh, you know, it's a, it's a live volcano. Um, and we had planned uh, to shoot at this specific site, which was 16,000 feet above sea level. So the air is very, very thin um, uh, on these kind of vertiginous um, uh, volcanic slopes where you're constantly sliding down in black uh, sand. Um, but we had been told that it never snowed up there until February. Um, and we trusted that information. Um, and then uh, the week before we were due to uh, start shooting up there, 
um, two and a half meters of snow got dumped on the mountain. Um, and, uh, and suddenly everything changed and we had to be very reactive to what the, the 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 volcano and and the uh the weather was giving us and and that was possibly the most uh challenging uh 10 days shoot of my uh career because i was constantly having to rethink how i was going to do it all and how i was going to stage stuff and you know the snow um uh made things and the and the altitude and the slope made things very very difficult on the last day the, the volcano actually erupted um, and, uh, and and we had to run for it. Um, uh, so, um, uh, uh, and, and a couple of days later, our entire set was covered in lava. Um, uh, so, so that was um, uh, probably the most challenging aspect of the shoot. I, yeah, I think that you that is a unique answer that I've never heard a director in my 16 years say we had to evacuate from a erupting volcano. Yeah, that was a bad one. That was a bad one. Oh, you know what? I'm glad we did it. It's a story that I will always be able to tell my grandchildren. And um and uh and you know, um filmmaking is also about adapting and reacting and also it's about life experiences and that's certainly one i'll never forget but also that sequence um looks fantastic on screen and also filming on location it adds so much to this movie it looks yeah. so good you know like those cobblestone cobblestone oh. streets and the locations you were at you can't recreate that in a sound stage no and um it's the first movie I've, sh you know, all my earlier films were shot on location. Um, and then somehow I kind of, it's as if I retreated into a studio um, uh, for the, at least for the last sort of three movies. Um, and so it felt really good to be back on location, uh, location shooting again. And that's something I certainly want to continue to do. I, I apologize. I don't follow people's personal lives, but I want to say that you're married to your star. Uh, uh, well, yes, we have a we have a child together. Yes. So, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're married, but basically you're in a relation. You are in a relation with your uh, female lead in the movie. Uh, Haley. Yeah. Um, I, I have to know, what is it like directing someone like that uh, when um, what is it like directing a significant other? Um. Well, I have to say, first of all, that she was, you know, um, the reason why I went to see the original workshop production was because she was in it. Um, and so uh, it, I had to ask her permission to um, turn it into a movie, um, which she granted. Um, and it was great. It was great. But we were just uh, we were just very, very professional and we just got on with our jobs. I'm a huge admirer of her work. Um, and I think that she is um, uh, she's a bit of a genius, really, Haley. And um, and so um, it was wonderful to be able to uh, bring aspects of her work to an audience that might not necessarily have previously uh, been aware of of, of um, might not necessarily have been aware of. Yeah, she she is excellent in the movie, and uh, uh, I mean excellent. I, um, I have to bring up Peter because he is also just so tremendous in the movie. And I'm just curious, what is it like directing someone when you see that they're giving you so much on screen? Um, well, it's a joy, you know. I mean, the great thing about directing is that you get a front row seat to these incredible performances, you know. Um, uh, and I am literally in the front row. I sit beside the camera uh whilst we're filming and um and there's nothing between me and the actor um and i'm and i'm talking to him i'm talking to them um and uh and it's uh you know it's he's in the the, the lovely thing about pete is that he is incredibly technically skilled um and also has a well of deep, deep human emotion. 
Um, and that's, you know, often you don't get one without, you know, often you get one, but not the other. Um, but to get that combination in, in a single actor is, 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 is thrilling and exciting. It means that he's very um, responsive to direction. Um, you can, you, you know, you can calibrate a performance um, uh, with kind of detailed notes and he can play them beautifully and beyond your wildest imagination. Um, and it's a great privilege to just to just uh, be a witness to such talent um, flowering. Um, uh, I, I'm being given the wrap up signal, but I just want to ask you one last thing. Uh, Go ahead. Going into the editing of this film, did you have a much longer cut? How did the, the film possibly change in the editing room? Uh, I love learning about that kind of stuff. Um, well, I, I believe in meticulous preparation uh, during pre-production, and um, and I and I work very hard on the development of the screenplay, um, and so I hope that when I start editing or start shooting a movie, it's pretty much going to be uh, what appears uh, on the screen. Um, uh, so no, there wasn't a much longer cut. I think the original, the first assembly was two hours forty minutes um uh which is about normal for me um and the finished film is just under two hours the first 20 minutes you can take out in the first week of post and that's easy the second uh 20 minutes uh, or the second kind of 10 to 13 minutes uh you have to spend about a month trying to kind of sift through um and then that last seven minutes is always a, a an absolute um uh uh bitch to try and to try and lose um uh that's where it gets that's where it gets painful but um i love i love the cutting process um uh, uh it's something that it really appeals to my kind of strange non-linear brain um uh it's um it's it's uh, it's something that i really love I have to stop there. I'm just going to say, seriously, man, congratulations on the movie. I hope thank it's a huge you. hit for you. You did such a great job with it. Uh, thank you, Steve. Lovely to see you again, mate. Hopefully we'll see each other again in person one, one day down the happy road of destiny. And I do hope that this book that you're trying to make, uh, you're able to make it. Oh, thank you. Bless you. Cool. Cheers. Thanks. Have a great day, man. Cheers, man. Bye.